Hi, this is Pat Duckworth, the hot woman with cool solutions and the author of the number one international best-selling book, Hot Women Rock. And today I'm talking to one of my lovely co-authors. She's an author, a coach, a speaker. She's a brand profit builder and she's the founder, and I'm going to give away her name now, of Anne Bennett Marketing. So let me give a big welcome to Anne Bennett. Hi, Anne. How are you doing today? Hi, Pat. Thank you so much for uh, having me. It's oh, awesome. it's just it's so good to be speaking to you. So um, let's just talk a bit about your early career. I, I, I'm not giving away any secrets when I say you're a child of the 60s and you were living <laughs> in California. And uh, if you can remember it, you weren't there. But anyway, moving on from that and you were developing this kind of ideal career and working at Vogue. Tell us a bit about that and, and then what happened. Well, you know, I'd, I'd gone to school out in California. I was the quintessential California girl, surfer. Uh, and I decided I wanted to go. I graduated college here and decided I wanted to go to New York City for my career. Because my whole idea was like, I had a big aspiration. I was going to be, you know, a retrospective show at the Whitney by 40. And I had all these ideas. And um, so I went out to New York, not knowing a soul. <laughs> and ended up, as most of the creatives do in New York, working in design, in um, magazine art direction and, and um, graphic design. So I worked for almost every magazine. I was just telling someone from Popular Mechanics to Vogue, <laughs> I worked for all of them. So I was the first woman in the art department at Popular Mechanics, which I loved driving cars, shooting guns, doing all this crazy stuff. And uh, then I ended up at the top of my career uh, in the fashion industry, being um, one, of the, one of the art directors and designers for Vogue magazine. And, you know, and I got my job with no fashion in my portfolio either. Wow. So I'm, I'm really somebody who doesn't believe in rules. <laughs> People tell you this is how your career is supposed to go because, you know, follow X, Y, and Z and you'll be successful. I always laugh. <laughs> to me, each person has their own pathway. And yes, you know, there's an overall possibly wireframe or structure to something. But how you do what you do is uniquely for how you do it, your pathway, your, your purpose, all those things. Yeah, yeah. So you're living in New York, you've got this great job, and then what happens? Oh my goodness. So I am like the it girl, right? I am like glitz and glamour. And um, I used to laugh about it because people used to ask me like, what do, you, what do you wear to work when you work at Vogue? And I would say um, black cowboy boots, black jeans and a black t-shirt because I dress like my boss who is the design director and uh what'd you wear when you lived in California well white tennis shoes <laughs> jeans and a white t-shirt right so my outfits didn't really change but so here I am I'm working in this very glamorous field and uh just happy happy had a great relationship I live in the be I consider the best city in the world is New York I come out and it's one of those clear, beautiful days in New York. Like, it's never like that, right? <laughs> and um, I'm walking up the street with my latte, getting ready to go to, uh, to work. And all of a sudden, everyone's looking up in the sky. So I look up in the sky and to the left to see the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Oh, my goodness. And it was undescribable, really. A devastating is too light a word. Uh, just unthinkable, actually. Like in the, one of those dreamy nightmare things. I don't know if you ever had those nightmares and you're like, I want to wake up. Yeah. It's a little bit like that. And you know, it was in that moment that everything that I had strived for or, you know, done, you know, to get ahead and do all these things, I didn't care anymore. Yeah. Literally yeah. fell away. As the towers fell, so did all of that ego-focused, me-focused energy. And all of a sudden, I was just left with, what do I care about? 
Yeah. What, what do I want to do? Um, what kind of contribution do I want to make? Yeah. Um, do, have you found many people from that day who had those moments and, and completely changed their lives? Yeah. yeah, and I think whether you were in New York, of course, it was more intense to be right in the experience, but I found people, you know, everybody knows where they were that day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can tell you exactly where I was, and I was back in the UK, but I can tell you exactly what happened. Yeah, and I think um, it changed. I mean, what happened for me was like everybody had family, friends, extended family, friends, relatives that worked in the World Trade Center. And so no one, it was like this global experience that no one was left unchanged. Yeah. That experience. Yeah. When I talk to people, I meet people all the time. When they hear me speak, I, I talk about it. And they're like, wow, I was there too, right? And, and instantly we talk about what changed in your life because people I call it a miracle because to me a miracle is something that changes your DNA in such a way that you don't think the same you don't act the same and you are not the same as you were a few minutes before that experience yeah. often we like to think of miracles as fun you know oh it's a miracle I got a parking spot you know? <laughs> and I'm like hey yeah, good for you it's yeah. awesome yeah, you know? <laughs> little and big is all great, right? But yeah, it's, it really changed my life. Yeah. So, what did you do after that? What what path did you take? Well, you know, I started. Um, I did a lot of growth and growth and development. Yeah. I started. I wasn't always someone who looked really deeply inside for their purpose. It was like I, I was like, it's out there. I'm getting chasing it. It's out there, right? And. Um, so I, I started studying, you know, I studied Marianne Williamson, Jerry and Esther Hicks. I studied Tony Robbins. I just studied all these things like what makes me, me. If it's not my job, if it's not how much money I make, if it's not um, how great I look or, or whatever it is, right? If, if it's not whether I'm wearing, you know, Manolo Blahniks or not. <laughs> yeah. What, what is it that makes me me and, and what are my gifts? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's been, and I continue to study that because I tell my clients all the time, building a business is next to children, raising children, I think, is the uh, biggest growth and development program you'll ever get in. And the most creative thing as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't matter what your business is, you know, I had this discussion with somebody the other week, you know, somebody might be producing things and think of themselves as a creative, fine, but I'm creating all the time in my business. Mm -hmm. but, you know. Yeah, I think entrepreneurs are creative, business people are creative in the f way they think. Mm. Um, most entrepreneurs are very innovative. Um, I use you know, my expression is everybody's a rebel, right? I work with the rebels, renegades, and the revolutionaries. And, and even people who on the, on the exterior might look kind of buttoned up. When you go, yeah, I work with rebels. They're like, yeah, I'm a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe on the inside, right? They're a little rebel on the inside. Or they have this ask. There's something inside of them that wants to express. And I think that's yeah. where my background in art and uh, design and things like that because I create from nothing. Yeah. I could look at someone and go, you know, I see that spark. You know, I, what is that? Let's get to see, let, let me look at them in a kind of a more of a, an inner way. Like yeah. where's the quirks and where's the, I, I think Edith Piaf, the, the French singer said, um, you know, use your faults. That's what's going to make you a star. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. That same, that same feeling. It's not perfection. It's yeah. uh, expression. Yeah. I'm loving this, Anne. So this is Pat Duckworth, the hot woman with cool solutions. And I'm chatting today to Anne Bennett, author, coach, and speaker. So, 
And one of the neurological levels that I talk about in the book is behavior. And that's about the action you take within your business. And I get this real sense for you as, as being a woman of action. You do stuff. Talk a bit more about that. But, you know, how are you creating within your business? Well, you know, it's interesting, Pat, uh, that you talk about that because people ask me all the time, like, I want to, you know, they're like, how do you build confidence? How do you build confidence? And I think it was Albert Einstein that said, uh, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. But what's even more powerful around imagination is action. Yeah. Because right? I consider myself, when I first started my business, seriously, I was shy. I'm, I have an introverted aspect on the bell curve. You know, we all have a bell curve. I'm not really an extrovert. And um, I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? Because mm -hmm. right? I've always been the person that supported the star, the people in front of me. I was behind on the computer and the design and all that stuff. And now it's like, oh, I'm front and center. People are going to see me, right? <laughs> but my thing has always been take an action any action it's more fun to take inspired action yeah but if you just take an action in the direction that you want to go that's where the magic is yeah there's a japanese saying and i'm going to say it wrong but you'll get the gist of it that action without imagination is kind of pointless and imagination without action is you know a dream but imagination with action is a life well led. You know, it's that exactly. combining the two. It's great to imagine good stuff and we all need to create things in our head first before we manifest them. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to take the action. Yeah, and if it's, you know, if it doesn't turn out the way you'd like it to, you know, I, I use the word failure. Yeah. But people don't like to talk about that, but say it doesn't, work the way you want it to or it doesn't work at all take another action yeah and it and slightly adjust the direction that's all you need to do it's kind of people talk about this in terms of like we shoot a rocket to the moon it doesn't go straight to the moon <laughs> it's being corrected and continuing and corrected and continuing the whole way it gets there yeah, and yeah. when you're building your business or creating anything, um, the flexibility that's needed when you're taking an action is like, okay, I took that action, it didn't work. Okay, great. I think I just said recently, you know, you're failing, it's a series of failures, but you're failing forward. Yeah. You're not like going, oh, I failed, I'm stopping, that's it. I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, whatever it is, right? It's not enough. And that's kind of, I think, the natural inclination, um, how we're wired. Yeah, that fear. Yeah, but when you're a little kid, how many times do you fall down? How many times do you fall down? I, uh, we all have scars up here where we cracked our uh, heads, our noggins on a coffee table or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and when then, we're adults, we don't want to do that. We don't want to fall down. Yeah, and through all of this action and through what happened to you before, you found your purpose. You, you defined that through the inner work that you did as well. Yeah, I think, you know, from my point of view, you know, I do a lot of, I help my clients understand what makes them fascinating. Mm. And through looking at stories, personal stories, I have them write like every decade, uh, a story of some sort. It doesn't have to be um, super dramatic or tragic but a story and when you look at all the stories there's dna that runs through the story yeah. and if you start to look at the threads there's things that you do either in a career or a story or a feeling or whatever that carries through and you can actually see your purpose yeah, that's lovely. That getting in touch with your DNA, that whole, in fact, I was having a conversation with Charmaine Hammond this week and she talked about those things that 
happened to you early in life and perhaps set that course. And I was thinking about it afterwards. And my school motto, I went to a Catholic school, so it was in Latin, was serviam, I will serve. And I can see that as a DNA running through what I do, that I will serve. You know, mm-hmm. it's just something that's very integral to the business. So, and I think when you kind of get into that, get into it deeply, that's when you really start to live the life that you're meant to live. Yeah, and people, my experience is most of us don't take the time yeah. to look, or if they look, a lot of my clients, when I'm teaching them, I have this new course, it's really cool, it's called um, Rock Your Rebel Style. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun, and we do it on Zoom, it. too, which is great, and, and everyone writes these stories, and they're like, well, how does that relate you know, they're, they, they, it's hard for them to kind of connect the dots where I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah. seeing the matrix, right? <laughs> of the whole thing. And I'm like, oh my God, you're so brilliant. And they'll go, oh, I never saw it like that. Yeah, helping people to see it. Fantastic. And I'd love to keep talking to you, but we're getting near the end of our time. So if people watching, if they want to read more about you, contact you, how can they get hold of you? Well, my website is Ann Bennett Marketing, A-N-N-B-E-N-N-E-T-T, marketing.com. And uh, they, I love to have people call me, actually. So if oh. people are brave enough to call, I'll give you a number. It's 949-287-6410. Uh, leave a message. Probably won't get me to pick up the phone because I'm writing or creating or something. But, uh, um, you know, I have a freebie on um, Liberate Your Rebel Voice. It's, it's a really interesting questionnaire, uh, obviously very creative and different in its approach, like what's your favorite cartoon character <laughs> and why. <Things> like <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love to talk to people um, or have them go and, and look at their rebel voice and discover, oh, through these questions, yeah. they start to see who they actually are. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Anne. This has been really lively. And thank you for all of your tips and advice that you've given during this. I've got some more excellent uh, interviews lined up. So keep watching this Facebook page for more of them. Uh, thank you again, Anne, and see you again soon. Right. Bye.